Yeah, we do another one here, kind of interesting. <clears throat> so let's write another procedure down here. Um, and we'll get that data from, let's just say, the same table. Person to person is okay. So we'll do create procedure SP, and we'll get this from what it, what table would I use? I didn't use a different table on machine. Uh, I use the human resources. Yeah, so the human resources, we will join that with another table, the person in person table. Okay, and we'll, we'll see if that works the way I have it here. <clears throat> so I'll just say SP employee, um, employee by name or something like that. And we'll have a parameter, we'll select the name type. So we'll pass a string. Here we'll go by the, um, maybe this the last name. This is the last name. This is a raw char. We'll leave it at, you don't know how many characters, so we could put, um, I don't know, 50. Okay. And we don't return that, that back, so we'll just leave it as is. And then uh, as. So we'll put a begin here, so we don't forget. Okay. And so we want to select from the select um, everything. It's okay. Well, let's see. We can limit that everything. Let's see what's inside that person that person table. Uh, person that person. We have the first name, last name. Okay. So we can say. <coughs> Start for now from the person that person table with a P, maybe P. P. <clears throat> I'm going to join that with the human resources that employee and the HE on AP dot, I think the business entity with the HE dot business entity. So we join those two together. Okay, and I want to get just the first name. So P that first name. Okay. First name. We also get that last name. Um, what else would I get? Yeah, H E that. Job title, then hiring date. Maybe. Okay, so I say we get those four fields from those two tables. This will give you everything, but we won't limit that only by a certain employee. So we'll put a where clause in here, where the last name. Okay, so the last name. Um, So we can say that last name <clears throat> equal equal to equal equal. They have to have exact match, right? Uh, we could do that. We say equal to the last name up here. So match the last name and the variable name. So whatever name we pass to it, um, will pass will match that exactly last exact last name. And we always make we always check to make sure right? you can always test it first. Instead of that uh, last name, you can say um, <clears throat> just just to make sure it works before you run it. You can do with a declare um, last name as var char and set that to let's just say the name of uh, what will be a name in here. Let's see. You could pick like uh, last name is like Duffy or Sanchez or I think like that accent symbol. So it's a Miller. So you put Miller here. Okay. And we can run this just to make sure it works. 
before we actually um, create a procedure. So we have three with the name of <coughs> last name of Miller. In this case, we have an exact match, okay? Letter for letter, um, and so on. So if you have Miller's, may not be trying anything. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, so there's no Miller's. Okay, so at least we know that that, that actually that works. So we can take this back up, and then we can turn this into a uh, procedure. Let's create that, and then execute. <clears throat> so we get our, our script. We just need one parameter. I didn't put any default value, so it requires one. Okay, so down here we can execute that. Um, exe sp um, employee by name. And we'll pass a string of, again, just test. We know Miller is there. <clears throat> so we pass that Miller string to it. If you run, you should get three. Okay, it should be four. So in this case, you can write this into a script and you can pass it to your, you know, the end user saying use this function to search for a particular employee by their last name. Okay. So they don't need to know what's going on inside this black box. And you can encrypt this. Uh, or you can put this to a, um, uh, yeah, you can call this function within the view. Um, I think yeah, maybe you can. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Because we can also have functions and procedure in there too. But anyway, you can get this procedure out there to the employees and then encrypt this so they don't know what's, what table they're calling and just say, pass that, you get the data back. Okay? So if I put another Miller, if I put like uh, maybe a Johnson, just guessing here. <clears throat> I see that it returns also three. So this one here is fine. It's not um, the best, but it, you have to be, you have to match exactly with that last name. So if you want to be a little bit more, um, um, make it a little bit more uh, versatile, you can say instead of equal, you could say like, right? Like the last name. It could be um, if you want just to have to start with this, or you can say start with anything has the last name, and then end with anything, right? So you have the two wild cards there. It could be um, if you put like son in there, you get Johnson. You get if you put John, you get Johnson back. So this is a little bit more uh, flexible in terms of just where you are searching. You make search in the database. So if I do this and if I um, go ahead and so you always want to put a default value just in case you don't put it. So you can say um, the character will be here just um, blank. <clears throat> I'm not sure if things will work, but So, I'm going to alter this. We already created it. If you do create, it's going to say, oh, this already exists. So, you have to drop it. <clears throat> right, so, alter that. And then, execute. So, now if I run just with the John, it should grab me everything with the word John in it. So, only three in this case. I put just the O, you should get a lot of those. Okay. So let's see, I get about 98 of them. So you can see how we use this in the past, and it's being used in this scenario, and of course, many more. Now we haven't really learned about, I think I skipped the entire uh, part on the subquery, but um, if you are curious, you always go back and do the subquery. That means you can call another query inside a query here. Okay. So, like this variable name, I could say instead of just last name here, I can call another um, function here and or another subquery and return a string back. So you can match that. But um, so. That's pretty easy to do, pretty straightforward. I can, so you can see all the join statements, you can <clears throat> put that in there. Um, what else? 
Are there any questions? No. So you can also do something with the learn about the um, <clears throat> structure last week. So here instead of blank, you put this into a null, no value, right? <clears throat> so you can do like. So when I when I do this, and if I alter this, okay. Will you run without the parameter? Right? There's nothing returned because we've got null. <coughs> you can do an if a block in here, right? We learned about that last time. So you can say if this is not null, then run this. Otherwise, run something else. You can also this can make it a little more complex. You could say here. Um, if the last name is not null, right? You cannot say equal to null. It's not because null in this case is not a string. So if that is not null, then this whole thing will run because we have the variable name come in here as an em not empty variable. You run all of that and then else you run the other part here without the where clause. For example, you can do that and then end it here. So if it comes with a name, run the filter. Otherwise, run it without the filter and grab everything. Right? So if I were to um, go ahead and alter this, I mean, yeah, save, alter this, oh, <coughs> script, oh, oh, I need to put, um, I need to put begin here, sorry, yeah, so they don't match that, it's confusing. So let's see if this will work, so execute all this here. Okay, so we got that in. I just add, I need to put it begin for the else. And so now if I run this without the parameter, it should grab everything from that table and everything but yeah, the one that I selected four columns, I get 290 of them. That's the entire table. Or when they match that many anyway. If I put a parameter for O, then I'll get only those filter, which is only 98, this part. If I put uh, back with a show, you get only 3. Okay, so this is where those uh, if and else uh, part comes in. 